Hi, this is Tom Dick. I'm a math advisor for TI, and this video is part of the TI in Focus AP Calculus series. We're going to take a look at rectilinear motion, or motion along a straight line. Instead of the function plotter, we're going to find it useful to use parametric. Now we're going to change the plot type to parametric, and when we go to the y equals menu, we'll find pairs of functions for x and y, both in terms of time t. I'm going to identify x1 with just t, y1 is going to play the role of my velocity function, which you can see there. If we go to the window menu, you're going to find some additional parameters that we can set, namely t min, t max, and t step. Those are the minimum and maximum t values, as well as the increment that we'll use for time. I'm going to adjust the window a little bit, x min and x max 0 to 10, y min and y max from negative 4 to 4, and now we're ready to graph and see our velocity function. Let's turn it on and graph. All right, so this graph is that of our velocity function, and what we'd like to do now is take a look at the acceleration function. So I'm going to define my x2 of t to be just t again, our independent variable, and y2 of t will use n deriv since acceleration is the derivative of velocity. So we'll take the derivative with respect to t of our y1t variable, get that set up, and then we'll just evaluate at t because we'll be graphing. And now we're ready to graph the acceleration function which shows up in red here. And here we have that usual relationship between a function and its derivative. If we look at where the acceleration derivative velocity changes sign from positive to negative, we've got a maximum velocity there. Where the acceleration changes from negative to positive, we have minimum velocity. And then again, where it changes from positive to negative, a maximum velocity. All right, now instead of looking at the acceleration, what if we decided we wanted to look at the original position function? And we're given an initial position that the position is 1 at t equals 0. That means we'll want to start with a value of 1, our initial position, and then we will add a integral that represents the displacement from time 0. That integral will be from 0 to t of our velocity function. So we'll need to enter y1 t, our velocity, and once we've entered that, we can enter the variable of integration t, and we're ready to graph. Now what we're seeing here is our original velocity function in blue, and now we have a position function in red. So the red graph represents the position function which is telling us exactly where the moving object is at on a straight line at time t. Now this is the reason we used parametric in the first place, is we can take advantage of it to actually visualize this motion. So I'm going to go back to the y equals menu, and I'm going to enter another pair of parametric equations x3 of t I'm just going to make equal to the constant negative 1 and y3 of t I'll make it that same position function we had before so I'll just define y3 t to be y2 t. Now why have I done this? Well if I go back to the window what I'm going to do is slightly change x min to negative 1.5 that's going to leave a space where we can watch a, an object move along the vertical line x equal negative 1 and that's the object that's moving according to the position function we see here. So as that position function's been graphed the object has been moving along with it. If we turn on the trace and we actually switch over to this linear path, as we increment time we can see basically the object moving along this vertical straight line. 
its y position corresponds exactly to its y position over on the position graph that's been graphed as a function of time. But we can actually get a feeling for this rectilinear motion. Here we can see the object has started to turn around. Its position now is going down. If I turn the trace back over to the path of the object, there we see it's moving down. It's reaching now its lowest point, at which time it will turn around and start heading back up. When we go over to the graph of position, we see that we're at the bottom of that graph. And now it is turning around, heading back up. And we continue to trace, and we get a sense of the motion of this object along a straight line. Uh, now we get up to our highest point turn around once again and we'll be heading down for just a short time and we reach the end of our time interval at t equals 10. Let's talk about the difference between displacement and distance traveled. The displacement is the change from our initial position of 1 to this final position of 3.322. In other words our displacement is about 2.322. Now a way to calculate that given velocity function is over the entire time interval, 0 to 10, we could integrate our original velocity function. And that should give us the displacement. So I'm integrating here from 0 to 10. We will pull up our y1t again from our parametric y variables menu. And then we'll integrate with respect to t. This should give us a value around 2.322. There it is. So that's the difference between our beginning position and our ending position. Now in contrast, suppose we integrated from 0 to 10 the absolute value of our velocity. What this is is going to be integrating speed over the interval and that should give us the entire distance that the object traveled going in either direction along the way. So I've gotten the absolute value signs off my math menu. And I will take the absolute value of our y1 of t and then we'll integrate with respect to t and this should give us the total distance that the object traveled. And we end up with around 10.098. You can see that the parametric trace is a great tool for visualizing rectilinear motion.